Giannis just called the recently returned Brook Lopez a cheat code, probably because the Brooklyn Nets all-time leading scorer has blocked four shots over Milwaukee's past two outings. Routing the Bulls at Pfizer Forum, even without Chris Middleton, Adetokounmpo and Holiday combined for 52 points on 73% shooting from the field, displaying Cream City's ball club could still be the top dogs out east. This video examines every reason for why the currently second-seeded Bucks are now a different animal in 2022, and ultimately shows you the likelihood of the starting five finding their championship caliber flow with Lopez and defending their title. Just 10.1% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't done so, be sure to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you're updated on the ins and outs of the NBA. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. After Brook Lopez injured his back during the opening game of 2021-22 season and missed the first four and a half months of the year, Milwaukee had to suffer through the absence of their championship starting center. The big three of Giannis, Middleton, and Holiday has more than held down the fort, as the Bucks are just two games back of the Miami Heat for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, ranking second in points per game with 115.4, only behind the Minnesota Timberwolves. Additionally, the Bucks are top seven in both offensive and net rating. However, it's been defensively where being without Brooke has been most detrimental to Milwaukee as the team defense has fell off to an unlucky number 13 in the NBA after the Bucks had a top 10 defense in their championship season and the number one defensive rating throughout the playoffs in 2021. Brooke Lopez is well known for his ability to space the floor at the five spot, but you can't forget the man was all defensive second team in 2020, and over the three seasons before he got hurt, the man's been a criminally underrated defender. Proving that is the fact that the 2018-19 campaign up until 2021, in each of those seasons, Brooke was hundreds ahead of any other player in total contested shots. Brooklyn's seven foot five wingspan mixed with his constant hustle make him an incredibly valuable defender. The former all-star in Lopez is evidently getting back into form for the reigning champions, having dropped double-figure scoring tallies in consecutive games. Since Brooks' return on March 14th, up until the Bucks' most recent game as of this recording versus Chi-Town, while Brooks still getting his lateral quickness back and the Bucks' defense is still ranked number 13 coincidentally over that span, he has averaged two blocks per night over his past couple games, so his defense seems to be coming around. Specifically since his return, Brooks actually been more impactful for the Bucks offensively, and considering he's the Nets' all-time leading scorer, that really shouldn't surprise us. Since Lopez's activation on March 14th, the Bucks' only loss in four games has come without Giannis on the road against a Minnesota Timberwolves team that's breaking out before our eyes and is absolutely on fire. Milwaukee's averaged 124.3 points per game over these last four outings since Lopez returned, which is good enough for second best in the Eastern Conference over that span, only behind the also extremely hot Brooklyn Nets. You can attribute the Bucks' points per game improving by 8 points per night with Brook Lopez re-entering the starting five, albeit in a very small sample size, to the fact that defenses have to account for the seven-footer's ability to shoot the three ball, which in turn keeps the floor beautifully spaced out for the team's elite slashers and perimeter weapons like Drew, Giannis, and Middleton. This tough catch in traffic from Lopez and springy poster on what should have been an and one signals that the former All-Star is getting his legs back. That's proved to be a scary sight for any fan of other top contenders, given Brooks' combination with Giannis. Giannis Adetokounmpo broke down Brooks' value best after Tuesday's game. Quote, Brook is a cheat code. He can rebound the ball. He can score the ball. He can make threes. His defense is unbelievable. He just makes it tough on everybody that comes into the paint. Giannis expanded to include the team's other options at the center spot with Bobby Portis and the former champion with my hometown Raptors in Serge Ibaka saying, sometimes just me, Brooke, and Bobby being out there or me, Brooke, Serge, or me, it's amazing. We're big, we're capable, we can shoot from three, we can be physical and nobody can get in the paint. We can rebound the ball and just space the floor and just play. I think all three of those guys are great basketball players, know how to read plays and make decisions, end quote. The Bucks experimented with Boogie Cousins, who's now thriving with the Denver Nuggets, as well as Greg Monroe, ultimately cutting them both. While the Bucks cutting DeMarcus initially felt like a poor decision, given how well Cousins was playing, 
Personally, having watched Ibaka's defensive rotations, switchability, and consistent spot-up three-point shooting, I can say confidently he was a better fit for what coach Mike Budenholzer was looking for at the five spot than Cousins or Monroe. Saying goodbye to a fan favorite in Dante DiVincenzo couldn't have been easy, but Milwaukee GM John Horst pulling the trigger in a 14 deal to bring in Mafuzi Chef was the right decision from an unbiased Toronto fan. While the Chicago Bulls were on a back-to-back, -back, the reigning champion Milwaukee Bucks, who didn't have Chris Middleton, just took down Chi-Town squad by 28 points, walking out of Pfizer Forum with an easy 126-98 victory. Given Milwaukee's only an hour and 30 minutes away from Chicago, right off the bat, the Bulls fans in attendance tore apart Grayson Allen, as you probably expected they would for what he did to Alex Caruso. Either Allen wasn't phased whatsoever, or he used that hate as motivation as the product of Duke scored six of Milwaukee's first eight points. The Bucks would then rattle off a run thanks to a flurry of Chicago turnovers, which paved the way for the home team to hold a double-digit lead. That 13-0 run would continue into the second quarter. Chicago couldn't buy a single bucket to start things off, and that run by Milwaukee soon became a 23-4 run. The Bulls just couldn't muster up anything. Despite a 10-0 run for them to close out the half, they were still down by double digits at the halftime break, as the Bucks led 59-43. Chicago would make things interesting in the third, but not for long. After they cut the Bucks' advantage to just 10, Milwaukee embarked on yet another run, in the blink of an eye, it was another 20-plus point lead once again. The Bulls simply couldn't match the Bucks' energy. After a Drew Holiday buzzer beater, Milwaukee led 91-69, entering the final quarter. It continued to be a landslide through the final buzzer. Chicago was gassed, and there was no opportunity for them to even sniff a comeback. Drew Holiday had an incredibly strong night, capping off his game with 27 points on 12 for 17 shooting. Giannis Adetokounmpo was his typical self, posting a performance of 25 points and 17 boards, making 9 of his 12 attempts from the floor. On the other hand, for Chicago, Nikola Vucevic finished with a team-high 22. DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine finished with 21 apiece. But the Bulls' defense continues to show extreme vulnerability. They're going to have to clean things up to avoid an early round exit, but to be fair, it is a Bulls team in their first year as a team together. Meanwhile, Brooke Lopez's presence stood out not just with his 10 points, but with his patented activity locking up the paint and the perimeter with his length. Where did Milwaukee miss Lopez the most though? I want to know your take. Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says the Celtics X Factor in my opinion is Robert Williams. He's already one of the best young big men in the league, averaging 10 points and 10 rebounds. He's currently third in blocks per game and is a deterrent for players driving the ball inside in fear of getting their shot turned away. With superstars in the Eastern Conference like Giannis and Embiid having MVP caliber years, it's a far cry to say anyone's going to shut them down. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.